Hi, welcome to another Ionic tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at message passing between pages. Uh, passing forward is uh, relatively easy as everybody knows, but passing back is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so I'm going to show you now a way that it can be achieved, which is relatively simple. Uh, so we're going to start with a brand new uh, application. So this is going to be a fairly long 10-15 minute uh, video. We'll see how well we can do for time because we're going to make use of a couple of pages. We're going to make use of, of a provider uh, which will uh, maintain the state for us. So we'll start first by creating our application. Okay, our application is now created. So we're going to go into it first of all. So uh, message passing. And we're going to fire up Visual Studio Code, uh, just using the code dot, uh, which brings us straight into the editor right here, as you can see. Uh, from here on in, we'll use the uh, internal console for starting Ionic Serve. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just framework out a simple application with a, a person with a first name and a last name, uh, and the ability of going to a different page to edit that those details and then to pass those details back to the first page, but leaving the two sets of data uh, completely disconnected. Uh, so first of all, we'll we'll just we'll create a bit of wireframe. So so we'll, we'll have a, uh, a folder called models inside there. We'll just create our person, and so we'll just simply do export interface person, uh, and we'll give that person a first name string and last name string. So a nice uh, simple model there. Uh, and we're going to do this with a couple of pages. Now, I, I tend to like to use, uh, for the most part, uh, different um, uh, standalone view pages. Um, so that the home page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of that. And then I'm going to create a couple. So we're just going to use the Ionic Generator. So we'll just use Ionic Generator View. And also Ionic Generate another page called edit so simple view and edit now of course we want to go to this view page to start with so if I just go to my uh, app uh, app module first of all remove the uh, unnecessary import statements uh, as these will now be lazy loaded and same here as well so I'm just going to go to here change you I'm sorry view page okay so the view page should just access from from here from the actual view uh, control that we've got there so we've got that now in place uh, we'll just start this make sure it works so simple page there we are you see nothing on there completely blank just got the word view and uh, there is an edit one there as well of course so so we know we've got something going on which is great so we'll just stop that batch job okay uh, the other reason I'm stopping the batch job is just so I'm not getting lots of uh, rebuilds as as we go along because we're going to run through this relatively quickly. Um, okay, so let's start scaffolding out some of this uh, information. So from the view side, we will construct our person. Uh, it, we'll just do it in the view. We're not having it in a, in a separate uh, provider at this point. Uh, by all means, you should do that. So person, uh, we'll just import person into there. Uh, equals, uh, so we'll just simply have first name of Joe and last name of Blogs. So nice, simple, uh, which we'll use for to bind onto the main page. And uh, what we're going to also do uh, here is update the, the view. So just make sure the view is in place. Uh, so I've got this piece of uh, code that's already been scripted out for us, which is nice and straightforward. Uh, get rid of the padding. I'm not a big fan of padding. Uh, now you can see that we need an edit button. So we can see, first of all, we have a person, uh, we have a first name, and we have a last name. And in order for us to edit it, we need to click on an edit button. So we'll save that. And we'll just create our edit function down here to resolve that issue. So there we are. And we are going to pass this object through to the edit page. So now if controller push uh, edit page. So as you can see up to now, everything you see here is is basically straightforward um, ionic so there's nothing too overloaded at this point okay so we're going to pass through this data so what we'll do is just simply say uh, we're going to pass through the item and it'll be this dot item so that is what we'll be looking for on the other side of the fence uh, so uh, if we now go to the other side of the fence we have our edit page 
uh, which can pick this up. So we'll, we'll get through those bits first. And we'll use the form builder component in order to actually make use of this. So uh, just simply, we'll just move this down and we'll create a uh, private form builder, form builder. Now this one I do have to write in the import statement because it, it does keep getting it wrong. So I'll just throw that up in there. So you just go from Angular Forms, you see it's now resolved, so we can make use of that. And we will uh, specify a form. So form, form group, try that. Okay, so we have our form group in here. Uh, which will load the data in. We'll prep this as well. So I'll just simply do this dot form equals uh, create the group with the form builder. And inside there, we'll have our two parameters as they were laid out before first name, last name. Uh, as you can see, they have empty values right now. We'll grab our data uh, from uh, what we had come in from the nav params. Now params dot get item, so that should bring us to the the actual item. You can do as person if you like; it's entirely up to you. Uh, if you want to have some type safety, uh, but since we're going to throw that straight into the form, it's not really that uh, important. So do this dot form dot patch value, and we'll give it the data. Okay, so that should hopefully update the these values. Uh, once again, we'll just make sure this is all working absolutely fine before I get too far ahead of myself. Okay, okay. so we have our original form and we click on edit and it goes into the edit screen. Nothing that you can see on the front, uh, which is absolutely fine, but we can see that uh, up to now we don't have any errors apart from like a, a stray F down there, but uh, I'm not too sure what that is right now. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's make some of this stuff uh, happen. We are going to now uh, implement a form, which I have uh, made ahead of time, which will allow us to edit these details. So let's go and grab that form. Once again, get rid of padding because I'm not a big fan of that. Resave, rebuild. So go back to here, click edit. So now we have our form with Joe and Blogs in there, which is great. Um, now at the moment, I can type in here and that should keep the actual model updated. However, when I go back, nothing happens, uh, which is, is to be expected because we only pass the raw data, and not, not the form. Uh, okay. But if we want to have that situation where we pass the data, then we need to have a provider that we can uh, attach these values inside. So that is what we shall set up right now. So do we have our providers? No, we don't. Okay, let's set up a provider. So I think generate provider. And we're just going to call it session. Give it a name you like, of course. Okay, so inside providers, we now have session. And inside here, we're going to get rid of the HTTP stuff. We don't need that right now. We don't need the uh, we don't need the comments. Uh, and like for like, we don't even need the HTTP inside here. We can leave these. Now we'll get rid of everything actually. So it's just a very very basic thing. So inside here, uh, we're going to set up a few uh, parameters that we need. So first of all, we need a variable uh, that we can hold our data, uh, which uh, currently stands as null. So this is going to be data that we'll be passing back to the parent page. And uh, for that parent page to grab that data, we need a get method, uh, which is what we'll use on both sides. So uh, let uh, data equals this dot data. So that grabs the actual data. Then we're going to uh, nullify the data and return the data. So all that means is that once this has been read, it will remove what is stored here. And then finally, post. And we're going to post the item. We don't know what the item will be because it'll be different every time, but we can put type safety each side of it. Uh, and also a nav controller that we can use to actually do the pop, uh, So, which I'll show you here. So what we'll do first of all is we'll assign the data to the item. And finally, we will remove ourselves as it were. So if I do pop, um, it's, it's up to you whether you actually want to do that. I'll leave it up to the individual page. Uh, some people like to like the one hit, uh, like myself, other people don't. Uh, but we have our basic building blocks now for ha uh, allowing ourselves to save. So we need to make use of this. So first thing we'll do is we'll go back to our edit page. And we need a way of actually going back, which uh, involves a, a cancel. So what we're going to do is we'll just add a button up into our navigation bar. Uh, ion buttons. So we've got our collection of buttons up here. And we're going to say we're going to start on the right hand side and we'll add our button. Ion button. 
and we'll give it a click event and it will just be simply save. Uh, it's up to you uh, what you like to call it, but we're going to call it save here. So as you can see, we have our error uh, because we haven't actually declared what save is yet, uh, but which we will do right now. So we will create a save method and we need something to go in there. And now, the way that we do this now is we need to actually make use of that session provider in order to uh, in, in order to pass our method, but our our variables back. So SP equals session provider. So we now have our session provider available to us. So this session provider post, uh, and we'll post the value of the form that we currently have. So that is the raw form. Uh, there's also get raw value. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between the two. Uh, we also need to pass it in the nav controller as well. Okay, so we'll pass in the actual value or pass in the nav controller. <coughs> Now, just make sure, once again, that that is okay. I keep stopping that thing, don't I? So if I click on here and write some data here, I click Save. It takes us back to the previous page, which is great. Uh, but as of yet, it's not actually updating the details here, which is obviously what we really need it to achieve. Uh, but we can do that with a new event. So uh, from the view side, we need to make the use of this data uh, when we go back to the uh, previous screen. Uh, so the way we can do that is by uh, latching onto a page load event called Iron View Did Enter. So we'll write that in right now. Iron View Did Enter. Make sure you get the carriage returns correct. And then on here we will do let new data equals this dot sp dot get, uh, which we, from the provider, if you remember before, will actually grab us that data as a person because it, it will come through as a as an any. Uh, and then we'll just simply put, uh, if I bet const is a better word, uh, if new data is not equal to null, uh, the reason it might be null is if there is nothing in there, so if it was just cancelled, then uh, nothing should be in there. And also, if we're coming from the other direction, if we're going to this page, uh, there would naturally be nothing here. Uh, this dot item becomes new data. So we have that in there, so it's now just rebuilding. So we'll go back to our form. Here's our form, draw blogs, click on edit, and we'll just change this to Karen Blogsy. Click save. And as you can see, the original form now has the new values. Thank you very much.